we're in the last session of today, and um, we're due to finish at five. So, and um, so we're really delighted to welcome these two guys. Um, in the far corner is uh, John Fox, artist, <coughs> musician, composer, photographer, teacher, and on my right, uh, Rich Witt, who's a colleague of mine from Metro University and is a leader in music and sound. Um, in their respective careers, they've both been in lots of different bands so, um, and often influenced by, I would say, radical arts, radical expression, surrealism, surrealism etc. And, um, and here's something of some serendipity regarding John Fox. Um, John Fox is from Chorley. Leonora Carrington is from Chorley, and Henry Tate, who set up the Tate and Lyle industry that put money into <coughs> Tate, modern Britain, and Tate Liverpool, is also from Chorley. So this is a bit of a Chorley fest today, which you didn't know that, because you all came here to celebrate the work of Leonora Carrington. But there's a Chorley subterranean subcultural Chorley festival. underground. Chorley underground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll leave with Richard to take us through. Thank you. John, you're ostensibly here then because you were born like Leonora Carrington in Chorley. Yes. But you're of a generation before um, we could have Chorley FM coming in our ears, according to Peter Kay. What, what did you have coming in your ears when uh, you were in Chorley? Tell us about your life in Chorley and your upbringing in Chorley. Please. Um, well, it, if anyone knows Chorley, it's uh, the closest I can, the closest image that I can use for it is Coronation Street. So that, that was my grandma lived in Corporation Street, uh, next to Stoddard's Mill, and um, that was very much the life. You know, she was the centre of the of a big family. The door was always open. Everybody congregated there. If you sat there long enough, you'd see the entire family and all the friends and neighbours as well. So it was, it was just that kind of life that you see. Um, it was also um, on, almost like a Monty Python sketch, you know, that my dad was a miner and he would cycle back from work and my mother would fill the bath, the zinc bath up that hung on the, on the wall in the, in the backyard and he would take a bath every night because there were no pit head baths there. Um, and I was a Catholic. I went to St. Mary's School in Chorn. Uh, I was in the choir briefly because I couldn't sing properly in tune. I would be hit on the head with a tuning fork and so on in choir practice. Um, but I, I got to know the, uh, the Mass in Latin, which I really enjoyed, and that was a formative influence. And, um, and so on, then motorway came through, which was a big, a big change. Um, but that was the beginning of music for me, because the drum enabled me to write songs. I used to stand on the roof of John and Richard and hum along to the traffic. Um, and I, I wrote, the first songs I ever wrote were written. Home of the motorway. The other, the other big influence was a vacuum cleaner. When we first bought that, I could sing harmonies to it. So all my music is industrial. Yeah, there are two, two things there that surprised me. One is that you were out of tune because mm. I've heard you live and um, heard you on recordings and watched you on video, and you have supreme confidence oh. in, in your vocal range and um, uh, your tuning? Uh, it's, it's completely uh, assumed, you know, I, I, I don't have any, I just launch myself at a note and if I hit it, I'm very lucky. <laughs> um, and I use a vocoder, which is a great help. It, uh, it puts me in tune. So uh -huh. I, can, I sing to the vocoder all the time, actually. <laughs> I do, that's what I play most of the time, is my voice. So it sounds in tune, but it's not, it's not really in tune. 
Well, I that was the great advantage of electronic music, you know. <laughs> I think your career has been going longer than vocoders existed. Oh, yeah, it? it has, yeah. 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 But the other thing was uh, the age at which you started writing songs. Well, you know, I, what uh, age are you talking about? Well, I, I was about 10 or, or so years old, I think, when I began to write songs. Um, and when you say write songs, you mean write lyrics? Yeah, lyrics and mm. I didn't differentiate, you know, the, I, I did it all together. You couldn't read music? I couldn't, I've never no. been, I still can't read music. No. No. No, no can you? Y yes. I bet you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Well, it, it's useful, it, isn't it? I, I sometimes wish I could read music. Mm. But then again, I, I work with many people who, who, who were um, very trained musicians, you know, Royal College of Music and so on. And I admire their dexterity. But it was interesting because I, I remember a conversation with a keyboard player that I used to work with, Peter. And I, I was very excited about two notes that he was playing and I could sing to. And he, and he said, why are you excited? And I said, well, there's a song there, I can hear it, it's great. I, I, play it again, it's fantastic. And I, I was just singing, and I said, why aren't you excited? And he said, well, I, I know what they are. <laughs> you know, I understand them completely. I've heard them many times before. So he wasn't excited by these things. And I think some of the excitement comes from just not knowing what the hell you're doing. Uh, it's a complete mystery. Music is a mystery to me. And I, I just launch myself into this mystery and it's it's wonderful i don't know what i'm doing at all i have no idea uh, but it's very exciting and that's the whole point for me is that i don't i don't want to get to know it too too w well it's like i hate to say this but it's like some sexual relationships if you get to know the person too well <laughs> It's not so exciting. <laughs> and music's like that. I, I, I need to leave it alone sometimes and keep a distance. And I respect it. And I hope it respects me. And it seems to have done that all my life. We seem to have a good reciprocal relationship. It's a sort of... The kind of affair where you live your own life and then you go across there occasionally and vice versa. And you meet and... The whole thing is wonderful, every time, I hope. Well, I do think the best musicians are those who are always searching. I think you have to, yes. You've always got to be searching. You, yeah. can't, you can't not do that. That's the whole point, isn't it, really? Yeah. To find something that is still exciting, you know, and still magical. And I, I'm a great believer. I used to think we lived in a scientific universe, but now I know we don't. And I think science is a good witness. But the real universe is magical and unknown and unpredictable, just like music. So I, I don't believe in... I think rationality will take you so far, but there's a great deal beyond that and outside of it. Well, that and I, 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 want to, I want to meet that whenever possible. Ah, yes. As I say, that brings us back to Leonora Carrington. It sure does. Yeah. And I wonder, in surely, were you at all aware of the fact that this lady existed? Or? No, not, not really. Uh, not until I was, went to art school. Mm. And then I got interested in the Surrealists. Because when I grew up in the 50s, everything was very grey. And Chorley was very grey, in fact, covered in soot most of the time. And the world seemed very grey. And the only technicolour things were science fiction movies and s some, some other films and so on. But science fiction was the... I remember Forbidden Planet came out. And that was the world... That was a, one of the points where the world became technicolour for me. Um, I needed to um, find the magical side of life and I was enabled to do that through media really I think um, what was the question again? Carrington Carrington uh, 
Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I, and when I went to art school, um, I found out about the Surrealists, and that was another technical point when the world changed for me, and I began to see that there were different ways of looking at the world. It was something I felt instinctively, um, but surrealism really put a name on it. And um, I read the stories. I read about Max Ernst, who was one of my favourites. His collages. I don't like his paintings at all. I think Dorothea Tanning was a far better painter than Max Ernst. But um, I got to know about his relationship with, uh, with um, um, Leonora Carrington and, and about... I didn't know she came from Chorley at that point, but I became interested in all the surrealists and all the stories that were around them and their lives and so on. So that was a real exit from that very conventional world um, that I was born into. Of course, it's a world that's vanished now, and it's it's a curious world now in the distance. But then it was it was the whole world for me, and I desperately wanted to find a way out of it. I remember that phase, uh, that um, word metaphysics, mm. excited me no end when I heard it, because I thought this is something to do with magical physics. It's a way of understanding the world that is magical as well as scientific. And I, I don't think the two things are in opposition. I, I think the two sides of the way we examine the universe. So um, Leonora Carrington was part of all that discovery. She was certainly a name in it. And I certainly remember the images that she had, which were very much connected with that magical side of the universe. And so is Mexico, isn't it? Yeah where she was then, and I didn't know she was in Mexico at that point. Uh, but Mexico connects intimately with all that magical side of the world. I was reading William Burroughs at that point, where he is taking drugs. Uh, he's, uh, he was holed up in Mexico, and he was taking Yaji, or Yaje, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, and peyote and telepathy and he was trying to find so he could communicate telepathically with his friend. And these were supposed to be a- available in the jungle, so he was trying to find these things. And I, I find that fascinating. Uh, there was also Edward James, who was mentioned previously, um, with his concrete, fantastic concrete construction in, um, in the jungle in Mexico, in South America. Uh, and so on. So there were lots of connections there. What about the 